Hello everyone, today I'm doing a part two on my character cloning guide. Um, what I got so far is this unit right here. And as you can tell, they all have the same stats. So, yeah. They're gonna annihilate everything. Let's go ahead and kill the boss of this and go into creating the um, clones again. And if you haven't noticed, I'm actually moving really fast. I hacked the in-game speed before I started the video. Um, it does make it a lot faster, but unfortunately, it messes with the orientation whenever you go to engage a unit. Sometimes, if you would think, you know, normally, hey, I'm gonna head on, I'm gonna head them on face to face, um, but the problem with that is usually you wind up clipping through them and you wind up fighting them backwards. Not a big deal though when you have clones like this because they're going to kill anything anyways. So I've got a vampire, I've got Prince Yamal, and I've got Debonair. Uh, let's go ahead and do a string search for Gam. And it's usually going to pull up about six results. The one we're looking for is typically the bottom one. So if we scroll all the way down you'll see our last character here and I've already started this file so it's not going to be the character is not going to be ending with an 11 uh, what the character's ending number is going to be it looks like it's going to be this and that's one whole character right there so let's clone it let me go ahead and zoom in on this so you guys can actually see what I'm looking at um, so the way I knew I was in the right spot was as soon as I browsed the memory viewer after I found that address I had a 5151 right there. It's Magnus's class ID and portrait. There's his level right there. And if you look around close enough on this right hand side over here you'll see the names but they're kind of jumbled up so that's how you know you're in the right spot. So we've got our clone already. Uh, we've cloned this person up there. Um, let's go ahead and make another one. And we'll deck the stats out. We'll give ourselves uh, ultimate stats. We'll give ourselves. Uh, I want to give myself the Pink Witch. Uh, she's not supposed to be in the campaign mode of the game. She's only meant to be played in the tutorial. So right after the level or how it works is the game the character will start with its name first shortly after its name you'll see the level then there's the class ID the class portrait and right after that shortly you'll see this 32 here and one over is the deity they worship right after that is the actual stats the beginning of them so and just start typing in 636363, six, three, six, three, which is the equivalent of 99 in decimal, and kind of glance back in here to make sure you haven't gone overboard, because if you go overboard with that and you go past the stats, you're going to crash the game. So it looks like we got one more. Alrighty. So now that we've had her decked out, she's got ultimate stats, we can clone her again and make more characters that already have the ultimate stats. We don't have to do all this stuff to them. We can just change their class portrait ID and um, their level, or if you wanted to, their equipment as well. So let's go ahead and change it to, let's see, what's a good character? A princess? back out of that screen check out what we gave ourselves. I'm not sure if that was correct it was great so as I've mentioned before the character you can change the deity in here as well right here is the water one but if you change it past four you'll wind up doing attacks like uh, you know dark quest word of pain 
you'll wind up getting those Bane attacks, but what I want to do is get those ultimate attacks, the ones that kill entire units in one, you know, one fell swoop. So here we go. If you do it like 07, I think it goes up to 09. There's not too many of these types of spells, but don't go overboard with it. Don't go past 9. I wouldn't recommend it. You might crash the game. I'm going to give her white mute. And I'm going to put both of them in a unit. I'm going to put her up front and put her in the back. Really, I should have made her the leader, but that's all right. I'll keep the witch as the leader. So let's go ahead and test our characters out in battle, see how they do. Alright, let's send Cookie to go fight the boss. <laughs> she just walked right around that person like, screw you guy. And there is a particular plugin I'm using that's making it so the background won't render. And that's pretty much all there is to cloning characters. It's a pretty easy process to do. You can actually give them equipment modifiers as well, things they shouldn't even be allowed to equip, but uh, I don't recommend it. It might crash the game. That's pretty much all there is to this. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment.